What's up guys, it's Meg and welcome back to Meg After Dark. Today we are discussing the season three premiere of Fear the Walking Dead. This is actually episode one and two, which I had no idea when I started watching. Um, but it appears that it was episode one for the first hour and then they rolled credits and went right into episode two. Um, so we're just gonna combine this review into one big review for the premiere. Um, I wanted to start off by letting, because I have a lot of new viewers, know that this is a spoiler free channel. And what that means is that if you like to go on on Spoiling Dead Facebook page or um, read any of like the scripts ahead of time or any news leaks or anything like that. We do not post spoilers for future episodes in the comments or talk about it or anything like that. So this is a spoiler free channel. We will only be talking about uh, season uh, three, episode one and two, and maybe predictions for the upcoming episodes. So spoiler free channel, uh, no spoilers, please. I wanted to start off, I mean, we just have to start off with Travis. Uh, I'm heartbroken. I really am because I was just starting to really like him, you know, and especially episode one here, season three, episode one. He was just so badass. We got to see the warrior in him, you know, and they talk a, a little bit about his heritage in there just briefly uh, in those uh, kind of, what is it, like locker room scenes before they try to kill him. Um, so we kind of know a little bit about him and then we get to see when they throw him in the pit just how much of a warrior he really is you know like he he just oh he just nailed it in his his facial features and i mean just cliff curtis's acting in those moments especially when he was like i will survive no matter what uh he just really nailed it the acting was incredible um so you know you really get attached to him especially this episode but in the season finale of season two um we saw him take out these two young men that killed chris and he was really like you know he was kind of this moral compass person in season one or two you know they, they're really trying to grasp the reality that he was living in while trying to maintain the humanity aspect of it you know and and kind of maintain that old world order i guess you know i this is not something we do we don't kill people um and he's realizing you know at the end of season two and the beginning of season three here he's realizing that that's not how you live anymore and so it was really sad to see that they then chose in the opening scenes of episode two they chose to kill him off and i watched the talking dead afterwards and it kind of explained it more um explained that he's got like four movie deals for avatar <laughs> in the making so uh you can see why he would be more interested in doing that than fear the walking dead um that being said it kind of sounded like they were potentially going to kill him off anyways um they had dave erickson on i think that was his name one of the showrunners uh and he was saying how travis's story arc was pretty much coming to an end he um, spent so much time trying to get Chris back and to get his own son back and when Chris died then he his main goal was to get Madison reunited with Nick and once that that you know you see in that the end of episode one where he's fighting to survive okay he knows Nick is is there he's with Nick and Luciana and his main goal is to get them out of there um, no matter what it takes and you can see that resilience in his face and in his demeanor that he knows that he's probably gonna die but he will do anything to get Nick and Luciana out of there um, to get them reunited with Madison and when he's fighting in the pit and he comes out and the real relief that you see on his face when Madison is hugging Nick and Alicia and he sees them reunited and I, I don't know the exact words that Dave Erickson said but he was pretty much like that was kind of him coming full circle his arc ending like he had completed what he had set out to do I guess and then they felt the need to kill him off <sighs> I mean he could have been so much more right but I think you know you have this couple this power couple of of Madison and Travis and then in The Walking Dead you had um you had Rick and Lori and uh you know it's kind of both shows start out with this couple and their family although of course walking dead started out differently but it was kind of a mission to bring the family back together but you know uh 
you have this couple and Lori eventually dies. Uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> Lori eventually dies and it's just Rick and he's kind of our main guy. And it kind I think it's kind of cool that in this instance, um, they were together and, and they chose to kill off the male character, the strong male character and bring up a strong female lead. Uh, I'm really excited about that. I, you know, I, the first two seasons, I didn't really enjoy Madison that much. Um, I wanted to, but I, I didn't have, um, you didn't get a lot of feeling from her. And the reason that we're finding out is she does have somewhat of a dark past that we are beginning to sort of see into. And she doesn't show a lot of emotion. And when she does, it's hard to watch, you know. Um, but I appreciated the emotion she put into Travis's death and and when she realized it and she was actually ill they they portrayed her as being physically ill from losing someone she loved so much um, and and you could see the pain on her face and I really enjoyed uh, Kim Dickens acting in this because really I was questioning her acting before and I saw this moment and I, I also read some comments where in other videos where um, viewers didn't like her crying but she is not someone who shows a lot of emotion the character, Madison, is not someone who shows a lot of emotion anyways. And so to see her character, and there's history behind that. There's, and we know there is, we just haven't figured out exactly what it is, but she doesn't have a lot of emotion in general. <laughs> and so to see her kind of break down and, and be sick over it and cry for one of the first times I think we've ever seen her cry, uh, it, it was it was kind of a breakthrough for her character there. And I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm really enjoying seeing where Madison is going and I hope she continues to remain a strong female lead. I don't want to keep going on forever about this. I am very disappointed that they killed Travis off. I feel like he could have been more. I really liked him. It's frustrating for me because I love Daniel and they decided to make him crazy and potentially kill him off. Although we did, we did, uh, the writers, showrunners, I can't remember who said it, but they did say that we will very specifically find out whether or not Daniel is alive or dead in season three. So we will know for sure in season three either way. I have a feeling that they're gonna bring him back. Uh, I've, I've, maybe it's just me really wanting them to bring him back, but I, I've had this feeling for a while that they're gonna bring him back. I am hoping that we do finally get to see him and we'll at least, if anything, get closure on whether or not he is dead or alive. So I'm excited for that. Uh, it, it, but what I was saying with that is that I, it was frustrating that both of these male lead characters or good characters, I guess, maybe Daniel wasn't considered a lead. Uh, then they both uh, killed them off potentially. It's frustrating. Um, let's see, let me run through my notes real fast. Um, basically the opening scenes we see Madison, Alicia and Travis uh, ending up at this military compound. They think it's a safe place. Turns out it's not so much a safe place. Um, Nick and Luciana are also there. They've been captured by the same people. Uh, and I thought that these people on this base were army dudes, okay? Like we kind of thought like, oh, these people are, are army. It turns out they're really not. They're working at, working, living at this ranch and they were just here for um, fuel which we find out in episode two, that they weren't actually like the ones running this compound, but they had like, apparently there's this story here about Troy, this kind of new guy that we're introduced to who seems kind of psychotic. Um, and he's always been like this. We hear from his brother that he's always been like this, okay? So that they, they purposely sent him away from the ranch and you know, send one away to protect the rest of them. So they know that there's something wrong with him, something like psychotic in there, uh, that they purposely have to watch him to make sure he doesn't do anything crazy. Uh, and left to his own devices, turns out he's been killing all of these innocent people to get information, you know, to, uh, uh, document how long it takes them to turn. In reality, they're betting and just having a good fucking time. There, there's not even any real information there that they're gaining. They're just enjoying killing people. So, Madison, in order to save herself, she will do, not save herself, save her family, uh, she will do anything. And we see that in the moment where she sticks the spoon in Troy's eye. <laughs> now, I have seen, I've seen commercials for the upcoming episodes and the dude's eye is still like, he's still seeing out of it. Now, I'm sorry, but I, I feel like she jammed that in there like pretty fucking hard. 
and it's bleeding and she had to have disturbed something that would ruin his vision if not entirely ruin uh, ruin his vision somewhat and in these subsequent episodes uh in these trailers for these upcoming episodes we actually see his eye open and like healing what the fuck is up with that like she almost scooped out his eye and there was lots of movement and jostling in there i find it very hard to believe that she just slid that around the backs of his eye and didn't actually do any damage uh i don't really like that i think it would have been nice to see his eye ruined you know for good uh it would make more sense to me but um we see that she's willing to do anything for her family to survive even if it means her own death and i again i liked i like seeing her character evolve to this point and even characters like uh well nick nick kind of was pretty steady there with his character i feel like i didn't see a lot of character development in this ep these episodes for him but alicia you know she um we see her when she is um when they've crashed so after Travis's death we kind of see a lot of emotion from her there because you know she's not really close to Travis but she knows how it's gonna affect her mother and he's been there he's been there fighting for them protecting them like you don't want to see someone that you care about die and even if she didn't have a super close relationship with him it's still he's still a very important person to her so I liked seeing the emotion that Alicia had during those scenes also seeing her crash land she is determined to protect luciana because she knows how much luciana means to nick and now she she's not close to luciana at all she doesn't even know the chick but she is determined to help her and rescue her and show compassion and bring her back to nick um and i liked seeing that as well and we also see her um using a gun uh, a couple times to save this um now what is the brother's name so we have troy who's the crazy one and i missed i think i missed what troy's brother's name is so let me know if you know otherwise i'll have to watch it again but he seems like the good guy here you know he's reasonable he is willing to protect uh he had another woman with him that they had some sort of backstory there some sort of relationship he definitely cared about her not sure if they were actually together or had previously been but she dies and it's very painful for him and i liked seeing alicia and him brought together alicia was forced to kill walkers and she did really well shooting like dang girl seems like she's been practicing or something <laughs> like she's really good with the gun there but i guess character development wise i also liked seeing alicia progress oh the moment when she's in the office and she we find out she's had a knife in her pocket the whole time and she had actually killed someone back at the hotel or did she actually kill him or did she just stab him i can't remember but she was not hesitant to do it and you see madison trying to protect her you know she takes a knife and she's like i'm gonna be the one to do it but i I, I liked seeing that Alicia is a survivor here and she's not a victim and she um, is uh, willing to do things that, you know, she knows she has to do in order to survive and to protect those people that she cares about as well. So it's kind of enjoyable. You know, these, these first two seasons, we saw them really trying to grasp what was going on and trying to hang on to their previous lives and reality and moral compasses, <laughs> humanity, whatever you want to call it. And now we're starting to see by season three, we're starting to see them kind of let go of that and figure out this new way of living and the fact that you have to do things that you wouldn't normally do to survive, uh, which I've said probably a few times in this, uh, review already but I, I like that we're finally seeing that with these characters it's about time isn't it uh so we see uh, everyone reunite everyone that's still alive reunite back at the ranch this new ranch um it's our group is always hesitant now to trust a new group because of what they've been through uh which makes sense i am not sure about this ranch i'm really not do we trust them do we not trust them it seems like they are reasonable people but they have this psychopath troy here which i seem i see as being a potential problem in the future here um i love madison's resilience at the end where she says this is our fate uh, we are going to stay here even if it means taking this place for ourselves which like she's so determined in this moment like girl you are one adult here you know two adults here a young girl uh teenager like you three are not going to be able to take over this camp on your own <laughs> so uh, and, the, and the previews look pretty interesting so it, it appears that they're going to be at this camp for a while 
um, probably the rest of the season and we're gonna get to see more of that and I don't think it's going to be happy times for very long here. Now I want to talk briefly about Strand because we did get to see him briefly. He was still at the hotel. He chose to stay behind uh, at the hotel and not travel further with Madison. Now, uh, opening scenes for him at the hotel where we see tons of people who have made it, you know, they saw the hotel lights go on back in season two and they've made it to the hotel and they are demanding entry and Strand makes the decision there without consulting anyone to s pretend that he's a doctor and to let these people in and give them rooms. Now, for one, they definitely don't have enough resources to feed all of these new people. Um, and two, he's pretending to be a doctor and kind of gets himself a in a little over his head. Uh, he manages, he manages to deliver a baby, which we don't really see. Um, he He's helping people, uh, okay, fine. But this, uh, the, the lady, the main hotel lady, I can't remember her name, but she ends up saying he needs to leave. Uh, he gets keys to the bride's mother's car. I think it was supposed to be a gift right i mean i i had a feeling that was what was in the box right i couldn't actually see what was in the box but i'm guessing it was car keys because it was a wedding present the car was like brand new down there covered it seemed like that was where they were going so now strand is venturing out on his own he can't stay there anymore and obviously <laughs> once they find out that the woman went out the window i I don't think people are going to be very happy about it. So he's leaving. He's on his own. Uh, upcoming scenes for him look really interesting. It look, kind of looks like he ends up at like a dam or something. Like what is that? My first thought was that it was some kind of dam that they were going to throw, that they're th executing people, throwing them off. But who are these people that he meets? And my one complaint is that we, we were able to see Strand at the hotel and we saw Nick Madison, you know, all of them, but we didn't see Ophelia. She's kind of just hanging out there somewhere. We don't know where she's at. And they didn't even really show previews for her. At least I didn't see her in the upcoming promos. I, I have to double check, but where is she? And she's on her own. And how long is she going to survive out there? Is she gonna find her boyfriend? Are her and her dad gonna be reunited? Like, I'm, I'm confused about that. <laughs> And I wish that they would have at least shown us a brief clip of her um, because it feels weird that they showed everyone else and not her. Uh, anyways, I'm going to end this review here uh, for a season premiere for Fear. It was very enjoyable. I really liked it. Uh, again, disappointed about Travis, but I can see, I can see, you know, I can be reasonable as well. I know that, uh, that we have to kill off main characters that we like in order to progress the story and not remain a happy family forever, uh, obviously but it is still disappointing. So uh, let me know in the comments if you liked this episode, what your favorite part was. Um, I am thinking of doing kind of a live Facebook feed on my Meg After Dark Facebook page. Um, the link is in the description if you haven't visited that Facebook page. I thought it might be fun to try out like a live Q&A video or something like that. If you guys are interested in that, let me know in the comments if that's something that you'd be interested in seeing. I don't have the equipment necessarily to set up a live YouTube stream, um, YouTube live stream, because I don't have a microphone and that kind of thing, but um, I thought it might be fun to at least try out some type of Facebook uh, Walking Dead or Fear the Walking Dead type chat. Um, but I don't think a lot of you guys are on my Facebook. So if you are interested in that, go like the page so that you can keep updated with that and also let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in. If not, that's totally fine. Um, also, if uh, you have any questions, let me know. We'll do a further discussion. There was one question, someone, and I want to answer it real fast because I forgot to include it in this video and I had mentioned it in my reaction so I want to definitely answer your question real fast. Okay, uh, this question is from Epic Zombie Killer Q&A. Hey Meg, when do you think we'll see Daniel return? They said he was returning this season, but where is he? I love Daniel and I want to see him again. What are your thoughts on this? So, they did not s confirm that he would be alive or dead in the season. Like I said earlier, they just confirmed that we would get some sort of finality for him. So we will 
see whether or not he like he will return but will we see him as a walker will we see him uh alive and healthy how will we see him um we don't know for sure that he is alive um i am holding out hope for that i feel like it would be interesting to now we have this whole ranch thing so to bring him back right now would be kind of weird it wouldn't really fit with the story we've got to see ophelia of it see where she's going um they are fairly far away from where daniel was um but it would be kind of interesting. It's one of those things where maybe they bring him back in the mid-season finale here. Um, we see him. Or maybe he comes back as some sort of villain. We do know that he was going kind of crazy when he set fire down there. Um, so it might be kind of cool to see him come back as a villain. Although I like Daniel the way he was originally. So I don't know. But I don't think it's going to be right away here. I'm, I'm, And they said in season three, they didn't confirm whether or not it was in the first half or the second half. So I'm leaning more towards either the mid-season finale or the second half where we'll get some kind of confirmation on whether or not he's alive or dead. Hope that answers your question. I love Daniel as well. I really, really hope that he is still alive. Uh, that's it for this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends and leave me comments and I will get back to you in a little bit. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you guys next time. Bye.